Eli Tomac. 2017 450 Outdoor Champion. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. What's up, guys? Welcome to the uh, season wrap-up for the uh, 2017 Luke Soil Pro Motocross Series here. I'm sad. We've made it. We did. We made it a full fucking full year. year. Supercross, outdoors. outdoors. Got a few more shows to do, but not part of the AMA series. Yeah, which is good because we have time between two. Like, we have next week with yeah. the GPs, but and then, we're only doing the podcast next week. And then we got, like, another three weeks till we even do a show. Yeah. MX of Nations preview. So it'll be great. Because huh, I could use a couple weeks off. I see why these guys get burnt out. I'm not going to lie. We're just last, talking about it. The last few weeks, I've been kind of like, I don't really want to do this right now. He's just, don't listen to him. I don't know. He secretly loves it. It's all right. He loves it. It's not bad. It was just, fun. We just, it was we fun just season. It's a fun season. And we're doing it, it next year too. Wait, so we're gonna keep doing it until we can't no more. Yeah, pretty much. So um, remember to uh, like and follow us on Facebook. That's where our podcasts are gonna be up here for this year. Next year we'll have actual podcasts mm -hmm. going on, but for this year, uh, podcasts will go on there. Uh, we're only actually doing one more about the GP. The next USGP week. at yeah, WW Ranch. Yeah, next weekend, which we'll watch. So mm -hmm. um, so that'll be up next week after the race. And then, uh, yeah, we will have a uh, blooper show probably next Tuesday, or the Tuesday after this, a week from Tuesday, whatever, whenever this one airs, a week from that day, we'll have a blooper show. Because let's face it, we're kind of some chuckleheads, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of outtakes. There's a lot of stuff you guys see when the camera's not rolling. Then probably the week before Monster Cup, we will have our Monster Cup preview show, yeah, our yeah. post Monster Cup show. Oh, oh, and we'll do designations at the end of but, October. But we have two designations, Monster Cup, silly. So we have six more total YouTube shows before the year's up. Before 2018 18. Yep. wraps up. So because yeah. we are doing a silly season, we've said it before, but we are going to do a silly season. Yep. So yeah, we'll have at least one silly season show, if not two. Just depends how much silly season stuff really mm -hmm. goes on here and there. Um, but that probably won't be till middle of October at least. Probably or even November. after Monster Cup, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, too, don't forget Amazon links down below. Click those. Go on Amazon, buy something, anything in Amazon. I don't really care. Just make sure you click the link first and then buy something. It gives us a little cut, helps us out. I can feed the man bear. <sighs> He's angry. He gets he gets hangry. I get scared. Just keep. Just keep. I get going. scared. We had pizza today. Didn't drop it on the floor either. Nope, didn't. It wasn't floor pizza. It was pan pizza. It was great. All right, that's enough of the BS. On some seriousness. Let's keep. Let's get to talking about. Uh, we were at Iron Man this week. It didn't downpour. It didn't downpour. First season we didn't have rain since 2000. Pretty much the whole week. Yep. So, uh, the track rutted up really deep. Deep ruts and the Hard. worst G outs I think I've seen all season. Yep. Other than that, the track was like the same as last year. Same layout, uh, which I really want to go ride it because mm. I want to do that Godzilla jump. It looks cool. It shows how good the track, though, really is. Why everybody loves that track when it actually we got dry and it wasn't super, super deep and soft. Because yeah. I remember the first year I was there and everybody was talking about, man, if we don't get a lot of rain here, this could be one of the favorite ones on the track. And we finally saw it. And honestly, it, now it wasn't really hot there today, like mid to high 70s. You know, it's actually even colder up here in Michigan. But the moisture stayed in the dirt almost the whole entire day. It didn't yeah. really start packing up to the last moto, so they got good dirt, and it showed why you know the track. It's it could be one of the best if it continues to not downpour that week. Yep. So, so um, yeah. Other than that, like I said, not a lot of changes to the track. So nope. Should we get into racing? Let's go. Okay, we're getting into racing. All right, 250s. Went first this week, so we get to talk about them first mm -hmm. and really... Drive it at home. We don't really care about the 250s. All not the, today. All the excitement was in the 450 not, class today. Not today, folks. But let's get through these 250s here. Let's start off... You want to start with Plessinger or Sexton's bad luck? Let's just start going to talk about AP because it's a joke. Oh, God. Poor kid. Just continues to prove Horrible why luck. he's never probably going to win a championship. Horrible luck. Uh, I, I don't understand him. I really don't. Maybe he should go race GNCCs. 
I just like the kid, dad, but I'm just saying, maybe you should go race GNC. Maybe he better, because if he crashes there, like he's, you know, uh, dude, I, I don't more time. I don't understand the kid. I really don't. I know he. The reason why I pulled off because of his hand, and I think that's what he's getting surgery on after now that this race is over with. But man, you just he look. He gets up, checks up in a second, goes around AC pretty easily. Probably hit that fucking right hander the hardest it's been hit all day long, going underneath the tunnel. And you look like he's gonna go after Osborne, and then coming back cross start that little single before the mechanics area. Probably just got Barche going up the face, and it's like, well, oh, there it is. And it's like, well, you know, he was he was moving before he crashed. He was on the move, and I was like, ooh, this could be a good race for him and Osborne. But here's the thing, though, with the way AP has been riding this year, he looked like he was pushing forward. Did you really think he was probably gonna catch Osborne? Because he's done this. Sure. He's done this all year. He looks like he's blazing speed. There's been times when he's went around. But he Osborne. did win a couple motos, so he maybe did. I don't know, man. It's just like you know that's plus and he, he likes Indiana. He's always yeah. good there. So I just I don't know, man. It just it's one of those things. It's like, dude, the kid just continues to prove why that people doubt him all the time. Yeah. I like him a lot, but it's like, man, you know, you got to be able to stay off the deck at least one moto, and he couldn't. Yeah. So, poor guy. And our other. Poor guy. Horrible, horrible, poor guy. Chase poor Sexton. Chase Sexton. Hits the gate last week. Running third. Trying to get, trying to win that hundred dollar bet with with AC. AC. Hits a lapper. Hits a lapper. Rides up the back of a lapper. The, in the only first moto person I think that would hit a lapper. Not because the lapper was, you know, just checked up on him in front of him for no reason. Like he just literally just Faded hit the lapper wide and hit him. Just hit him. So, I and mean, then wanted it hard. Oh, yeah, he slammed. He bounced. Hard as fuck. That oh, second. Dude. He bounced off the ground. So bad. Mm -hmm. So bad. But let's talk about the fact that he is he's finally coming around, you know, the, get the bad luck out of the way. And I still stand by my comment last week that Supercross, man, whether it's West Coast or East Coast, he's going to be a force. He's shown his speed. And, man, he just continues to get better and better and better. And I'm telling you what, man, watch out because he's going to come out like a ball of fire whether it's a one. he doesn't break his femur in the whoops in practice at his first race, <laughs> he might do something. Or break his wrist testing for Supercross. One of the two. He, one he of the two. If he doesn't do those, he might. He might. But in all honesty, uh, he's doing a lot better and he's, he's proven why Geico picked him up. He's just got to stay off the ground. Yep. So, which is kind of a theme in this class. Kind of. Yep. So, all right, let's get into the top five. Uh, Fifth overall, overall, Mitchell Harrison. Yep. Great day for him. Happy for him. Really happy for him. Keeps building. He's not, more than likely, not going to be with the star team next year. Going to go down some other teams. Not going to say it because it's not really allowed to. We'll get to that in the Silly Season video. Yep. yep. But, uh, I mean... 5'8 for, you know, fifth overall is not a bad day for and, him. And the top, the first moto, he was getting close to the top five, made a little mistake, and his lap times were inside top five speed. And the second moto, just, he was in sixth, and I don't know if... He went down or just knifed the front end and buried it and lost a little bit of time. But it's this class. I mean, you basically start and then you finish where you start. And then, you know, because he got locked in with a Cunningham, Hill, and Cooper battle. But he's been faster than those guys, even though Cooper's only been here since Unadilla. But he's handled Cooper other than that second moto Unadilla for the past two rounds. He's handled those guys all season. But, yeah, he just couldn't make anything happen because everybody is so close. Um, just continues to build. Great season. Uh, ended up ninth. Yeah. No. Yeah, ninth in the points. Um, Not bad for seventh in Supercross. Season. Yep, seventh in Supercross, ninth in outdoors. Obviously, everybody who watches this show knows that I'm happy about that and just continues to build. And uh, he's going to be a player come Supercross. He did really good last year, so I'm happy. Good. In, I know he wanted a podium, but I think if he continues to build, I think he's a top five guy all next year through both series. So. He's proven he's gotten the speed. Yeah, he has the speed in both of them. It's yep. just one of those things you got to get a start. So. Yeah, if he can put if he can up his consistency, he could be, and he could be even higher in outdoors because we're gonna lose some of the 250 mm -hmm. guys that are gonna race Supercross 250 and then go 450 outdoors. So I think it starts just more consistent with his starts because he'll get a top five start one moto and the second moto he'll bury himself. So other than that, great way. I'm I'm proud of you, Mitchell. And uh, yeah, then we'll move on to the fourth place guy. Yeah, Jeremy Martin. Um, biggest letdown of the year. <laughs> you're just gonna keep asking me um, that. That's the que that's the million dollar question, literally, probably with his contract. I mean, eight three for fourth overall in the day. Yep. Like that's not what Geico signed him to do. No, they that's paid, not. They're paying him to win. He's pay he's being paid to win. Mm -hmm. Of course, I found out that the way he ended up on Geico was kind of effed up anyway. But, yes, it was. Um, you know, whatever. He's there now. How does this bode for him going into four fifties next year for outdoors? Oh God. Uh, well. I guess we're going to find out if the 250 boys can really stack up with the big dogs because both him and Zacco 
are both moving to the 450 class for outdoors. And I don't have a lot of confidence on either one of them. I know that's kind of hard to say, but I just, I don't. I don't have, yeah. They're I'm... too up and down. Even Zacho, who won the title, he had his bad days. You look at the guys in the 450 class, the top guys, not the mid pack guys or the top five to ten guys, the top guys. And let's be honest, whether you want to talk about Zacho and Jamar being straight up faster than guys like Weston Pike and Dean Wilson and Bogle and all those guys, but at least you can say, maybe minus Bogle, that those guys are consistent and guys in the 250 class are really up and down. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Things change when you go to the 450 class. You're riding with the big boys and these kids got to figure some shit out, which is funny because Jay Martin and Zach aren't kids. So, you know. I don't know. We'll see. I think Supercross is going to be another letdown, but whatever. I don't have any hopes for Jay Mart ever, period. Is that bad? Uh, it's justified. It's kind of weird considering he's a two-time outdoor champion, but it's justified. Yeah. I mean, I don't, like I don't like I don't have any expectations to see him as a player in either class next year or wait, the year after. How crazy it is that you could say this is probably the deepest the 250 class has been maybe ever, and outright some of the fastest dudes on any given lap, but none of these guys might ever do anything once they go to the 450 class. Well, somebody's going to have to do something at some point. I mean, I win a championship. I talk about winning a championship. Well, that's possible, too. But eventually, we're going to recycle. You know, we're, guys are going to retire, the top guys right now, and these guys are still going to be going. So then at that point, if they're still relevant and around, are they, you know. But here's the thing, then, though. Then who's it going to be? It, that's the thing that's hard to tell. This It's almost as hard to tell guys going from 250s to 450s at this point as it is to tell amateur kids who are going from super minis to big bikes. Mm -hmm. You just don't really know. Here's the interesting thing though about a lot of these guys, especially if you talk about Zach Osborne. A lot of these guys that are top dudes like a Zach Osborne, a Jeremy Martin, an Alex Martin, an Aaron Plessinger, an Adam Cincerello. Yeah, most of these guys other than Osborne are on the younger side, but most of the guys that have ever gone from 450 to two, from 250 to 450 have been about 21 years old. A lot of these guys are early 20s to late 20s or mid 20s. So you think about it, they go to the 450 class in the next two years. You know Kenny's still going to be dominating. You know Marv's still going to be dominating. Baggett, Eli, Anderson, all those guys. So by the time that those guys retire, these guys are going to be at the end of their career anyway. So it's like, do you really see them winning a championship? Because, I mean, the youngest one out of the group is Adam Cincerello, and he's 20. Yeah. Like, I j okay, Eli's 24, right? Yeah, he was 24. So he was 20 going into 21 by the time he moved to the 450 class. Yep. Okay? So you're looking at Adam Cincerello, Aaron Plessinger, and those guys not being 23, maybe, 22, until they go to the 450 class. I mean, dude, it's it's a valid question. Can these guys really do anything? They might just be really fast 250 guys and then just be average 450 guys. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. It's very, it's very interesting. But uh, on a third place guy, pretty happy for him, Colton Cole Nichols. Nichols. Another star guy. Um, yeah, that's what they kind of paid him to do. Yeah, and he's been and he's been building all year. Mm -hmm. And it's actually funny because midway through the moto, I mentioned to you, and I even wrote it down. He ran a two twelve fastest yep. lap. Osborne's fastest lap was a two fourteen mm -hmm. second moto. Yep. So he's going two seconds a lap faster on his fastest one than the first place guy is. That's pretty damn impressive for a guy who's known for technically being a supercross guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm just happy for him because man, that kid's been through the struggles. You know, he wasn't very highly touted coming out of the amateurs. He was a good team green rider, but never really won. I think he only won, like, two championships as an amateur. Um, yeah, everybody knows him for Supercross. It really makes me wonder if he is healthy going into Supercross, where he's going to be. You've got to peg him for a podium guy going into Supercross with how he did at the end of Supercross this year. If before he, he got If hurt. he doesn't break his femur. But he made it through all of outdoors. That's so true. that's the first time he's made it through a whole season. So we'll see. Uh, I think that he's going to be a player, and you might ultimately say that he might be the top guy at Star next year if Ferendis has a. I don't. I don't. I just don't know about Dylan going into next year. But um, second place guy, Adam C. and Cirillo. Is he happy? Because I think about he, second. Because no. he got his ass handed to him today. I don't think he's happy about today, and. I've got him pegged pretty high to win the Supercross title next year. No matter what coast he's on? Yep. Even over Osborne? Yep. Okay, I don't want to get deep into this, but I want a little bit of a uh, why is that. 
he finally made it through a whole season healthy mm -hmm. without crashing. Yep. So now he knows what it's like to have to go the full season because he hasn't before. He's nope. always been hurt, so he's had time off. Mm -hmm. So I think that helps him in his preparation for next year. He goes, okay, He, I think once he gets past this GP next weekend, he's going to sit down and look real hard in the mirror and go, mm -hmm. okay, what did we do? How did this work? What went well? What didn't go well? He's going to change his program again a little bit. Not major changes, but little changes, tweaks to it. And I think he's going to come. I mean, look at look at this year. He, this is the first full year he made it through Supercross and Outdoors. Yeah, he only pulled one overall in the Outdoors. Whatever, that's fine. But in Supercross, he still got three wins. Yeah. So if he changes his program a little bit and comes in with his focus and everything, and I think he's going to, and I think what's going to be a big help Kenny's coming back, mm -hmm. so Kenny's going to be really focused, which is going to drive AC, because AC and Kenny get along really, really well, so it's going to drive AC to be really focused about stuff. I think you're good. I, I, yeah, that's that's my thoughts okay. on that, without diving too too deep into it. Then I'll just, I'll just expand on that a little bit then. If he's on the West Coast and he races Hill, is he still the favorite? Yes. No way in hell. You have him beating Hill. Yes. Who arguably, well, actually, I don't think it was even yes. an argument. I yes. think Hill was faster than everybody. Yes, because the biggest question mark I have is that JGR bike. Oh, I ain't worried about that. I am. I'm it's not. the same bike. It's the same bike Dungey raced in 2010. The well, exact same bike. Well, we know JGR can build motors. Though. We know they can build motors, yes. But I also heard that Yosh is coming on, but they figured that Yosh is going to focus more on the 250 team and JGR is going to be more focused on the 450 well, team. Well, Yosh can build a motor, too. Yosh can also build a motor, but I just don't know about that bike. That bike is a huge question mark. Mm, it is. That's valid. As far as 250s go. So I think if AC's on the east, I think he's the favorite, but if I think they put him on the west where we ultimately think Hill's going to be, I agree with all of your points. Don't dispute not one of them. Not one of them. I completely agree. I still would say that Hill's the fast. I still say that he'll be the favorite just because, let's be honest, I think even Osborne was not going to beat Hill on a good day when Hill was filling it last year. But uh, speaking of Zach Osborne, number one overall, 1-1. One, one. Yep. Uh, just a great way to end the season. Yeah. I mean, well, when great you way have, to end this year. When, you have, when you have no pressure... I mean, that's... And he went out yeah, and... Yeah, he, he went out and rode exactly how we think he's going to ride at Dis Nations and everything, which is just dominant. Um, yeah, there just really isn't any question about it. He just, he just dominated. That it, was it. Plain it's a, simple. It's a great way to end it and a great way to have a lot of confidence. And let's see, he's going to be uh, a month and a week off till Dis tell Nations. To train. Yep. And so, just well, focus on Dis Nations, Dis Nations. Because he's not racing Monster Cup, is he? No. Yeah. No, so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, so you think he goes 1-1 in his two races? And I'm not talking 1-1 in 250. I'm talking 1-1 overall. Well, that's another thing I guess we don't want to get deep into. But I will say 1-1 in 250, 50 No. I think he definitely blows everybody out of the water in MX2 class. I just, and we found out today, those GP boys in the 450 class are the real deal. And I just don't see him beating some of those guys. But if there's anybody that's going to do it, it's going to be having one of those years. You could say that Cooper Webb last year might have done it, but... He, he could pull a Villapoto 07, but I think it's Jimmy, highly I, awesome. I think it's highly unlikely. But I will say, I think he's gonna try. Oh yeah. I don't think he's just gonna go there, be wanting to be like, hey, I'm gonna win my class, and then that's it. Like I think mm -hmm. he's gonna want to go there thinking he can win, which unfortunately for us though might be a bad thing because maybe he may ride a little bit more out of his comfort zone. Yeah. And I don't know, Better man. Better to die trying than to die. No one's got expectations for this team, so. Except for Zach Osborne. Except for Zach Osborne. Zach Osborne's the only one that he'll tell you, yeah, we can win, no problem. We got Cole Seeley Covington, hell yeah, we can win. We got this. But, uh. Um, you guys just get top fives, I got this. I, I mean, you know what, congratulations. I'm very critical of him, everybody knows that, but you got to give it up to him. It's a great year for him. Dude's been the best all year in the 250 class, indoors and out. And uh, won two championships, same thing Cooper Webb did last year. And we'll see next year how he stacks up in the 450s yeah, and the 450, outdoors. Yeah, 450 outdoors. So, uh, yeah, that's all you can really say about him. Yeah, pretty much. So, any uh, any other thing about 250s, or are we ready to move on to the excitement for the weekend? Not really. Okay, that's it for 250s. So moving on. Let's get to the let's get to the big dogs. Oh, shit. Let them eat, buddy. Let her eat. All right, 450 class. You want to start with Tomac winning the title or Hurlings? 
Uh, first, I want to go Tomac and then go five up, and then we can make our way to Hurlings because I think we got a lot to talk about with that. All right. Cool with that? Yep. Okay. So Tomac wins the title. Congratulations, Eli Tomac. Finally, we got the first one. Got the monkey off his back, and it almost looked like it might have not happened. But I give the guy credit. He came out that first moto, and he he said it too, and we we both saw it going on. Mm -hmm. It was an ego race for him. He got the he got his pride to get the best. He of was coming out to go one one, win the title, and spank Hurlings, mm -hmm. which was great idea on paper. <laughs> it was really great idea on paper. But <laughs> and it might happen next weekend. He might beat him next weekend both races. Yep. But today. That was not the case. That was, oh man, I mean, I wish I could expand more on it, but we don't want to get too much into it because he didn't get top five. I think that just, I think that's all I'm trying to say about it. I think there was a lot going on in the second moto. You could clearly tell he was mailing it in. He just yeah, wanted to win the title. He, he, the second moto, you could watch him not attack like he normally does nope. when he's going out to win. Like, you can rewind any of the races he mm -hmm. won this year and watch him attack corners, and he was not doing that the nope. second moto. He was cruising through. Riding it smart, almost like we said, dungy esque, mm -hmm. um, as to try to win the title. It felt uh, like it. It yeah. felt like a dungy championship. Um, but, you know, at least he got it. You know, the first race, he did come out and hole shot it. Only race he hole shots all year is the first moto of the last round, which he, he needed to. That's he, great. Then it, gets passed by Hurlings. Then goes, hey, I'm going to pass you back. I'm going to triple up this hill. Lands in the soft stuff, wads it. it, and I'm just like, Oh, man. There goes the title. Yep. yep That's like, it. We're uh, done. Yep. Tw front ends tweak. Can't finish. Call it in. Between uh, Marv's winning. Marv's winning. Red Bull KTM. So. Oh, man. But yeah, uh, I just want to say congrats. That's awesome. Great way to get the monkey off his back because all I got to say is, buddy, you're going to need it because old Kenny Roxon's coming for you. K Rock is coming. He's on the comeback. He's, he's on the mend. He's, he's coming for he's you. He's back bud. on. Yep. He's probably riding today after watching the motos. Going, Me, dude, I he got, got you. He got so amped up. He's like, bro, I just went. I'm six, coming. I just went six seconds faster than I did on Tuesday. <laughs> yes. So anyway, um, yeah. So that was basically it. Tomax finished sixth overall, so he wasn't even in the top five. No, five uh, six. Yeah, so. five six. So, uh, but fifth overall on Cooper the day Webb. going. Six, six five. five. Cooper Webb. Yeah, Cooper Webb, which is not a bad day for his last right. race on the 17. 18 the next weekend. We'll see if that changes anything. I, yep. I, I mean, don't know. I, we'll, well, we'll be able to see because we'll be able to see where he stacks up against Hurlings and Tomac on the 18 next weekend. I don't think it's going to be close, but I think he's going to be better than he was in the 17. I think we won't. I don't know if we're going to find out how good that bike really is until Anaheim won. Probability that he's still on a Yamaha after 18. 25%. That's better than me. I was going to say 10. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think he's gone. I think I don't know that the Yamaha team is going to exist I was about after to say, that. I was about to say, I'll do you one better. I bet the Yamaha team folds after 2018. Yes, because I think they're going to lose Webb and they don't want to put the money back into it again. Who are, I mean, seriously, not to, once again, not to dive too much into this, but who the hell else are they going to sign? Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, literally, they were literally at their point, there were two guys that were on their main list for next year and for the next guy with Webb is Bogle and Justin Barsha. And no disrespect, Justin Bogle just won a, a race, at, won the overall at Bud 3 class weekend. But then you watch what he did today, and it's like, those are my two picks. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I'm not going to invest the millions of dollars into those guys. Yep, so, which is sad because there's another team we're losing, but... Yeah, but you know... But they're you, only employing one guy this year, if, yeah. as far as we know. So, I mean, maybe they'll employ somebody else, and I guess they're going to have a gaggle of 250 guys that are moving up after next year, so... Yeah, I, 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 gotta, I could say... Like, Marty. You know what? Actually, they could! <laughs> after next year. I didn't year. think about that! I mean, after, why not? After, after next year, I mean. But uh, good. Building. Keep building. Keep building. We'll find out next week how he really does uh, on the 18. I think he's going to do better. I don't know how much better, but he's going to do better. Yep. And then on to the fourth place guy, which I'm really pumped about. Good way to end the season. Cole Seeley. On a track that a lot of people didn't think he was going to do shit on with how rough it gets. Yep. Uh, fourth, was running third that second moto for, what, 22 minutes, some 25? Yeah, something like that. A long time. Um, but it bodes well for us going into Disney. And did place. you happen to check the gap between him and Hurlings when Hurlings got in a second? Did you ever? Mm, no. Okay, because I was kind of curious because I would like to see what the gap was between Hurlings in second and Cole in fourth when he got around Cole. Um, dude, I'm not, I'm not going to say he's going to go out and win the class by any means because obviously that's not going to happen. But the way he's been riding, dude, if he gets two solid starts, if he puts it in the top five twice, we're gonna and Covington can keep it off the ground. We're gonna stand an okay chance of putting it on the box at least at Dis Nations. I feel. And that's the thing, like you take out Hurlings, and I said this, you take out Hurlings and Cairoli. Like a lot of those guys have been really up and down. 
And I see him being faster on his good day than Fevra and Paul Ann. And yeah. those have literally been the third best guys. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, he can very well go and, out and, and get the, third. Yeah, but the thing is, too, is you got to remember, Hurlings and Cairoli, even racing at those nations, they don't have anyone else on the team. No, it's all So it them. doesn't fucking matter yeah. where they finish because they really, other than they take points yeah. away from us, they don't have any impact on us, really. But you know what I mean, though? You look at you look at Sealy and Fevra just won the last race in uh, Sweden. Yeah. But you look at, you look at Sealy and you're like, dude, on his good day, he's just as fast as Fevra is. I don't know, man. I, I just, I think it's better than what a lot of people expect. I got a yeah. lot of confidence in him. Yeah. So, I mean, not to get too much deeper into that, but I'm I'm proud of that dude because, honestly, did you really think at the beginning of fucking Outdoors we were going to be, well, we were really critical of him. Cole Seeley, fifth in the points, and no. what, uh, four, five top fives? No. No, hell no. So, no. dude, you want to, in my opinion, I don't know about you, I think that's the biggest progression out of anybody in both classes. Which from is where funny, he was. too, because he's like, what, 28? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, a biggest progression in one year from... Yep. Where he was last year, because last year he wasn't one even top ten. I don't think in the points, maybe no, tenth. No, he was doing okay until, he, but then he got hurt, so then he couldn't ride. So, but even at that though, he never sniffed a top five, but one time I, I think. I thought he was. I think it was Hangtown. I thought he was doing okay. I, I don't know. We have to go remember, back and look, yeah. but it just felt like he was not anywhere near the speed of. The no, top he wasn't. Guys. He wasn't as consistently fast as he is this year, but he was. He so, was sniffing it. Good on Cole Seely. Yep. Right. So third overall, and that's third in the championship yep. too, right? Third. Yep. Blake yep. Baggett. I mean, what can you say? Glued his hand to his bike today, which yeah. was impressive. <laughs> Literally, they spray glue or some sort of tack thing on it his glove, like and then adhesive. he grabbed the glip. Yeah. It looked like an adhesive or some shit. Like, I don't know where him and, well, I do know, him and Tom are freaking hillbillies like us, so they just think of shit like that, but yeah, fuck okay. it. Literally, George is showing us. Yeah, they spray his glove with this adhesive, and he grabs the grip before he goes out, and that's how he holds on. Yeah, okay. What what happens when you crash? Yeah, no shit. I was going to say, your hand just never lets go. Um, Pretty good. Great way to set the season. I mean... He battled a, he battled Mar for first, that second moto, for a couple laps. Yeah, about three or four. a good battle, yeah. Um, I, I, I think now, obviously, in his camp, he wouldn't say so, but I think third in the points, really good for him. Maybe second if he had never gotten hurt. Um, I don't know if a lot of people thought he was going to be in a podium contention come outdoors. No. I know that everybody on the KTM squad might have, but I know a lot of people like us didn't think he was going to be there because of how his 450 season had gone, or 450 career had been to that point. So uh, it's not bad, to be honest with you. Yep. So, and then second overall, Marvin Moosecan. Gave, second her, in the gave her hell. Gave second her hell in the weirdest fucking crash, crash ever. Like, it just she comes up short off the bike. Straightened it out. Scrub whip. Front end loaded. Low looping, side. Just... D whatever. Off the side of the track, should have won the second moto, but um, well, you know, they gave it hell. A, another guy that if midway through the season with that knee injury, never would have thought we were talking. Well, he's within title contention, and if Eli doesn't go at least 10-10, he could possibly win this. I know that we talked about it a couple rounds ago. I think it might have been after Unadilla or maybe after Washugo, but I still think Eli would have won the championship. But had Marv never hurt his knee, how close do you think the points would have been that second moto? You think it would have been? More than one? Well, we figured this out, didn't we? Because we figured... Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we did. We took all the negatives out, okay? Mm -hmm. So Marv doesn't have that DNF. Tomac doesn't Two have DNFs. the brake... Yeah, Tomac doesn't have the brake problem. Marv still was 10 points-ish down, yeah. roughly. And that was with only giving Tomac, like, a top five at Glen Helen as opposed to eight... Or as opposed to, like, the 18th or 19th he got. So Marv so, might have actually yeah. been your champion Yeah, today. so Marv might have won that title, but... Again, shoulda, coulda, if, ands, buts, or what's. But still, a dude. Did, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was arguably... This title was a lot closer than it should have ever been. Yep. But... But that's... It, that's but racing. You, you that's got, how you line up. But the thing is, you gotta put that more on Tomac than Marv, because that's oh, just yeah. Eli's inability to close when he needs to. Yep. So, uh, great on him, but uh, now, now we get to the number one guy. Number one guy. And I'm going to let you go first because you've been taking a beating this whole entire week. And do you have, uh, you going to kind of come back on your uh, statement a little bit? Okay, well, here's what we're going to go with, okay? So, for anybody who, has, who doesn't follow us on Facebook, I wrote an article this week. All uh, him. All uh, him. Yeah, it was all me. I sat down and wrote in about 10 minutes of how I thought Hurlings was going to do coming to the U.S. From what I've seen of him riding in the past, what I know about him. 
Um, and my thoughts just basically, okay, he's coming in on a track he's never rode on. Mm -hmm. Fuel they don't use in... Not um, as good a fuel. Not as good a fuel that they use in the GPs, so he's got better fuel. Different bike, uh, jet lagged, hardly any preparation one, over here. One day. One day. Literally, like, flew in Tuesday. Rode Wednesday. Rode Wednesday by himself. Flew out Wednesday night, got to the track Thursday, rode Did press day, day um, and then raced today. So, the guy's just got to be, like extremely tired mm -hmm. can't like I can't imagine um, so I wrote my article that I figured it would go one of two ways he would either do what he did today which was dominate mm -hmm. and and I openly said that I mm -hmm. said he, it could go that way the other way I said it could go is he could struggle all day and probably get in a top 10 anyway because mm -hmm. he's just talented you know I mean the guy is super talented um, but he could have struggled mm -hmm. but he didn't he no. came out today fastest to dude all prove day. a point. He was the fastest dude all day, and he I don't care what anybody to. says. Yep, and yeah, he put the he, smack down on everybody. At one point in practice, if you didn't watch the practice report either, check it out on Facebook. You should be following us on Facebook, you should be. assholes. You should be. Um, he was four, the second practice, he was four and a half seconds faster than Marv in second place at one point. Yeah, it was all the way down to the second to last, or like two minutes to go before yeah. Eli put in a heater. Yes, and then Eli, it ended up he was only like a second and a half faster than Eli at the end. Uh, but just ungodly, like watching him in practice, the only thing I could compare it to, and I text you and mm -hmm. even said this, was Eli in 2015. Yep. I hadn't seen someone flow mm -hmm. that, even, even Kenny last year mm -hmm. did not impress me speed-wise like Hurlings did today in practice. Now in the race it was a little different. He looked good. He looked better in especially in the first moto, but he still wasn't as impressive as I was as well, yeah. I was in practice. And that's and, and that's, that's race that, that compared helped, to yeah. qualifying. There was a lot of different things going on in your mental state you know, at that point. The second moto was super impressive from him. Second to last. I was gonna say third to thirty second. eighth to to first. It's second at second, one point. Well, we yeah, say second. Marv because we knew Marv would have won. But still he still won. Yeah. He still won. So And that's Marv. You gotta keep it on the Yankee, yeah. you gotta keep it off the deck for the whole moto. Now for the guys who, for people who don't like the cocky side of it, he was you could tell in his podium speeches he was a little arrogant like but kind of knew I was But let's do also this, remember but, though, they are there is a different way of looking at things with those yes. guys over there than Americans do think I'm I just I just gotta ask you, uh, I know it's one race. Are you going to retract your statements a little bit on how you feel about hurling speed overall? Because we've I had think, a lot of I think he's, Yeah, he's he's fast. He's very impressive. It, this is one of the things, like, when we get to, like, when we do... Um, the podcast. Well, podcast next week. Well, probably. like, when we talk about any of these guys comparing, okay, say, the amateurs when they're coming out of Loretta's to the pros mm -hmm. or, you know, the Euro guys to this, until you put them on the same track mm -hmm. at a track... That say like suits the U everyone. yeah that suits everyone or the U S guys are used to or whatever it's really hard to say who's fastest you know and one of the greatest things I've heard all week I was listening to the Pulp Show and Eric Pinard was talking about how he had it lined up in like 2011 and he's still working on it but he water he like planted the seed and watered it a little bit about the final race of the year for the GPS and the Nationals mm -hmm. being a combined race mm -hmm. in the U S somewhere or whatever and are basically our top 20 guys yeah the top 20 yeah guys. and and it points pain so that everyone's actually there racing for yeah. points i think i remember that and that's like that, the that was best a, idea i think i've ever heard because that was at the height of villapoto and dungy yep. and you know those guys and well and he, and he said eric Pinard even said i had uh whoever the guy bruce or whatever at monster he's like i oh, had bruce it Sornstrom. yeah he had it he had him where he was like yeah i'll let it happen you know, even though Red Bull is the signature sponsor of the outdoor, like, I'll let it happen because it would just be so epic. Mm -hmm. Like, it's better than Des Nations because there's yeah. no team motive to it. It's no. just everybody's literally out for one. everybody's out for points, especially when they're title if you haven't clinched it already. I, I mean, and if you've clinched it, well, then you're just out there to prove you're the best in the world. So, I'm going to ask you again now that we're on camera, like I asked you both times during the moto. What does that say about Tony Cairoli when Tony was at his best earlier this season when he was annihilating Hurlings, when Hurlings was getting it figured out? And anybody has been watching, you know that Tony's been in manage mode because he's over 100 points up on Hurlings. Yeah. Even if had he had a, you know, Hurlings would have won last weekend in Sweden, it would still be like 80 points. What does that say about Tony Cairoli at the height of this season when he was riding at his peak point? Can you honestly say now, after seeing it, I know it's one race, and I know we still have the GP next week, but to see what Hurlings did today, and we don't know what's going to happen next weekend, and we can talk about that a little bit more after this question, can you honestly say that I don't think there was any way Tomac was going to beat Cairoli? No. 
I, I don't think so. I know that, I know that not, pains not you to say that. Is just, I know that pains you to say it. As fast as hurlings look today, Cairoli is just and he, de and he, he demolished hurlings at the peak point. But what do you think is going to happen next week when well, Tomac doesn't have... Now, see, here's the interesting thing about next week, too, okay? Tomac doesn't have a title to race for. And so, Hurlings doesn't so next either. Week, so, yeah, and Hurlings doesn't either. So this could literally be an epic freaking battle next week. So I guess we just get into it. What do you think is going to happen? Because you can't say now that... And I said it. I think it's possible Tomac could go 1-1, one, one, but you cannot sit there and tell me now that you honestly believe he'll decimate Hurlings because there's no fucking way that happens. It wouldn't... It, to be completely honest, wouldn't it all surprise me? If Tomac decimated him? Wouldn't surprise me. How do you figure now? Be since you've seen Hurlings at his Hur best. Hurlings is fast. Hurlings is fast. But when Tomac has no pressure and all he wants to do is ride and win, God, that guy is... Bro, he put it on the deck first moto trying to run his pace. He, man, yes, but I still think he had it in the back of his head of I got to win this title. I he, just, he was trying. He was trying, man. And I, he really was. And Hurlings was not out of but, control. And Hurlings, you can no. honestly say, had more in the tank. Yeah. Because when Marv... Look, I'm not trying to act like I'm all of a sudden on this Hurlings bandwagon because he knows it. Everybody around me knows it. I don't like the dude. I think he's arrogant since the day I fucking started watching him ride back in 2007. Back in the 85 days. And I still believe the dude that could wax all of them is Ken Roxon sitting at home with a bum-ass arm. But, with that being said... And I'm taking the American bias out of it. I want it. Yes, I want to see an American win all the time. Obviously, I don't like when those guys come over here and handle us. There's no way in hell, even at Eli's best this year, can I see him decimating Turlings. So okay, so if like he does to our guys. If Hurlings goes one one next, or if Tomac goes one one, how much do you see him winning by next week? Two seconds at most. We're in sand next week. Hard pack sand or not, there's no way. Tomac talks about how him being a sand guy. Let's face it. There's it's no gonna, fucking way he can beat Hurlings in the sand. All right. Well, let's just put it this way. It's going to be an awesome race. Oh, it's going to be. Because you've got two and guys Tony, out to prove they're the fastest in the world. Tony, Tony, Tony is going to get in the middle of but it. But let's see, though. But, hey, Tony might say, hey, I don't get to race Tomac all entire year. No. Why? He's got a 100-point gap. There's no way he loses it because, in three rounds. Because if he hits the deck. But he has a 100-point gap. If he hits gap. the deck and knocks himself out. Oh. Then, then that and Hurlings wins the rest of the way out, which Hurlings possibly could do. But that would literally mean Tony. Tony hasn't gotten hasn't gotten knocked, knocked himself out since the 250 days. Well, I'm just saying getting hurt where he can't ride. Okay, so let's put a little bit of more hyperbole into this. What happens if Tony goes there and wants to try to prove a point and rides like he did at the beginning of the season? Then it'll be even better race. So who wins? Who, win, who wins? Oh, that? Fuck out! Th throw him in a hat, man, because that's going to be because you've got two KTM dudes against a freaking Kawasaki. Well, we know dude. Tony Cairoli and Hurling said there's no love lost there, no. so there's going to be no team orders there. No. Uh Oh, so okay. Be like, be like today. So, Jeff, did you know that uh, Marv was right behind you? Was there any messages on the pit boards to let him buy or whatever to get the points? I didn't even read my pit board. I don't care. So, <laughs> let's let's just... Best thing ever. Since we got a preview then, since we're not going to get... Because we have our podcast, but the list has come out for guys that are riding GPs. Uh, 450s, it, there's some other guys, like some privateers and stuff. But Tomac, Barsha, Webb. 250s is Hill. Cincerello, we don't know what's going to happen with Savachi, but just let's kind of peg him out because he's probably not going to ride until A1 next year, whenever, East Coast. Mitchell Harrison, Justin Cooper, and then RJ Hampshire and Chase Sexton. Okay? Without going too deep into detail, how do you think our 250 guys do? Who do you think, with the after seeing what Covington did last week, which, by the way, if anybody hasn't seen that second moto in Sweden, go fucking watch it. Coming Holy shit. Was nuts. That dude was on a damn mission. But with that being said, um do you think if Covington goes there and tries to prove a point that one of our guys beats him? Because I told you after that, I told you this week that if Covington rides like that, I don't know if anybody other than Zach Osborne can beat him. I don't know. I don't know if any of the guys are gonna have anything for the GP dudes, because I mean, realistically, the only one I could see doing anything is AC. Well, and that see that's the thing though. I think that Covington, Paul's Jonas, and Sue are the only guys that can beat any of our guys. So you might be looking at an American sweep from the top five with Covington. What I'm getting at is, is do you see any of those guys if Covington's feeling it beating him? Since Zach Osborne's not going to be there. Maybe AC, but he's the only one I could possibly see doing it. Okay, because I completely agree. I'd say if Savachi was healthy, which even if he does race, he's not going to be. So you got to take him out of it. AC, 
But honestly, I'll be up front with you. I think even if that, if Covington rides like that, I don't think AC beats him. I don't think so. There's no damn way. So then let's get to the 450s. We just talked about it. Um, I mean, we pretty much covered this. Do you think... Cairoli, Hurlings, and Tomac. But do you front. think do you think Tomac goes 1-1 next week, or do you think Hurlings, him and Hurlings split? I will be super surprised if Tomac doesn't go 1-1 next week. Okay. Because you think he's just going to have a point to prove? Yep. But you honestly... And he has no pressure. But you think he... You think he, he can... He has no pressure. He doesn't have to worry about... Um, uh, does nations, but you think he decimates him in the sand? Maybe he doesn't decimate, but I think I think he wins both, and I'm gonna say by five seconds. Okay, so here's my question to you then, since we since I know that you're very critical of Hurlings, and now it's all justified. If Hurling goes one one again next week and decimates Tomac, what are you gonna say? Because you know how I feel about it. I don't what like to do, but I'm going to say after that. Yeah, what are you going to say about it? Are you going to? Let's I, just wait till Kenny comes back. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about the hurling's Tomac thing. Yeah. Are you honestly going to? Are you going to? No, say, I'm going to say let's just wait till Kenny comes back, and then we'll let's re, no, let's restack this whole thing. Just the speed between hurling's and Tomac. Are you going to honestly sit there and say that yes, we don't know what happened over a series? I'm going to say I want to put Tomac back on 2015 Honda Sierra. Come on now, you're floundering. You're fla fla Come on, man, you're floundering. No, no. At that point, then yeah, hurling's is. He's better than Tomac. Yeah. I mean, we don't know for a full season, but you honestly would have to sit there, and I know it's going to be, it's going to happen. If he goes and one, and he goes and beats Tomac one one, you everybody's going to have to sit there and say, Hurlings is better. Yeah. But I still believe Roxon's is better. Roxon's better. Yeah. I still believe Kenny's better. Yeah. But as much as I hate to say it too, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to be everybody else. I'm going to have to say Hurlings is better than Tomac. I don't think it's going to happen because I think Tomac can go one one next week. But damn, dude, if, if Hurlings goes out there and he puts a smack down, yeah, that's next gonna... week's actually a really good test because no one's rode that track. No, Eli's never been there because that track's only two, three years old, and, and he has Eli's never been there. Hurlings never been there, so it's really good actually, in that sense. Actually, the funny thing is the only guys that have ever been there that are racing next week is AC, Hampshire, and I would probably say have to say Mitchell. Yeah. Those are the only guys, literally the only dudes on racing there that have been there other than maybe some local privateers. Yep. So... Holy shit, man. What a way to end the season. It was. It was exciting. People are probably pissed, but that's what that's happened. All right. That's motocross, man. Yep. So, again, don't forget, like us, uh, subscribe, uh, share the video, click the Amazon links down below, help us out, go on there and buy something. Mm -hmm. Not what we link you to necessarily, but just buy something, period. Mm -hmm. uh, don't forget, podcast next week for the GP, following the GP race. And it's going to be on the Facebook page. And you won't see us on YouTube until the MX of Nation preview show. Well, you'll see him, but you won't see us doing the show. Yes, we're going to have a blooper show, but that's just stuff from the rest of the from all year. Live stuff. Yeah, live stuff will be uh, Des Nations pre and post show on YouTube, and Monster Cup pre and post show, and then a silly season or a silly season report, and then the A1 the report. Road. Yep. At, and the end of November. So. What are we thinking for the preview show for MX of Nations? Week before? Yeah, probably the week before. So probably that Tuesday before we'll air that. Because all the teams are pretty much announced at this point, other than teams like fucking Hungary. Yeah. Which nobody cares. So thanks everybody for watching this season. Yes. Really appreciate we it. We appreciate the hell out of you guys. So. It's um, awesome. Yeah. We will see you guys for some of these off season races. And then we will see you guys for. Supercross 2018. Thanks, guys. See you later. Got mismatched four cards on that picture. You notice that? That was because I tried to cut the fucking holes in the four cards with the logos mm -hmm. on them and fucking cut the holes wrong for the whole shot device. Well, you're much better this year. And, you know, you're not fucking running that TLD fucking the seat cover. I like the TLD for whatever. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Alright, anyway, uh, 250s, okay. Scene three. Should we take, should we change it up? Should we just fucking, like, just talk about people like they do on Pulp? Or? I don't give a fuck, whatever you want to do. Eh, nah, we'll just keep I think things. we got a good, I think we got a good thing yep. because we're the only ones that really do what we do. Yep, alright, so scene three, take one. Three, hold on. <sighs> Can't put that in the show. Matt will quit watching. One of our viewers, we can't, let's be honest, we can't afford to lose any viewers. Yeah, gotta have them all. all right, <laughs> all right. Let's start this over. Okay.